What's up everybody? This is Jeff with GIS Chops. In this video I'm going to be answering the first challenge in my series of videos where I give you real life examples of GIS work. I've set up a playlist with all of these videos that will be in this series and so if you want to go see that playlist go look in this little thing that's going to drop down up here. If you haven't seen the challenge video to this answer video that is also going to be up here so go watch that video and that video will have a link to this answer video at the end of that one. Your assignment was to take this CSV that had coordinates buried in some other text, extract those coordinates to two separate fields, and then plot those restaurants. These coordinates represent restaurants all over the United States. So that was your job. Get those coordinates in separate fields and then plot those restaurants. I decided I would do it the way most of the new generation would do this task. So I went to ChatGPT and had it write a script for me. So the text for that script is right here. This is what ChatGPT gave me, and it it works. I ran it. It works. It gave me an output CSV file, so it does work. Is that wrong? No, because you use the tools available to you. But what you do need to know is what this does. You need to know what these bits of code are doing. So once you have ChatGPT write the code for you, then you go through it and make sure you're understanding what all of these lines do. And I'm going to recommend that you really get to know this RE library or this RE module. This re.search and then what gets put into that as a parameter. This is matching text. And all of these things with the backslashes, that matches variable text. Like it, these specific patterns match numbers. So it's going to match decimal numbers because it knew the format of the input coordinates. So it was grabbing just the numbers. So that's what this pattern does. It uses a lot of backslashes. Sometimes those backslashes are escape character like this first one. That first one escapes the open parentheses. I just want it to be a parentheses. But I would dive into that regular expression. That's what RE stands for, regular expression. These regular expression patterns, I've gone and found a cheat sheet for you that can help you figure out and decipher or decode these pattern matching sequences. And I found it on DataCamp. This is that cheat sheet. So it has all of these different formats and different characters that will match certain things. I don't have time to explain all this to you, but for example, a, a dot matches anything except for a line break. So C dot E would match any character in between a C and an E. So it matches clean and cheap. It doesn't match assert or sent. So it gives you examples of what it does match and what it doesn't match. So that's why in our expression, the dot had to be escaped. See that backslash? We wanted an actual dot or a decimal, so we had to escape it so that it wasn't figured into that pattern matching, those special characters for pattern matching. Anyway, brush up on your regular expressions or regex or regex. How do you say it, everybody? Put it in the comments. Regular expressions are a great way to sharpen your skills. So learn how to use them, figure out how other people use them or how ChatGPT uses them, and then put them in your code. This is how ChatGPT did it. I did not do it this way. I'll show you how I did it. I'm going to add my restaurants to my map. Do you know you can do that? You can drag from your file explorer into your table of contents and it will drop a file in there for you if it's a suitable file format. It's pretty cool. So if I open my restaurants CSV, I saw that I could grab the coordinates individually without having to do a lot of scripting. I know if you use ChatGPT, it's not a lot of typing, but it's still, you gotta go type in the prompt. Forgot to mention, I'll put the prompt I used for ChatGPT down in the comments. I put this prompt in, it wrote it, and it worked. So without any help or debugging or tweaking, it worked. I did have to tweak that bottom line, I'll show you. I did have to tweak this bottom line with the hard-coded file. That's all I had to change. So how I did it is, first of all, I came here 
and I went to fields view. And because it's a CSV, it doesn't let me add fields. So I'm going to have to import this CSV into a geodatabase. I'm going to right click restaurants, say data, export table. This is kind of a shortcut to get it into your file geodatabase or your enterprise database. So when I right click on that, it already has the restaurant CSV in there. And then I'm going to browse to databases, this one, and name it restaurants. Hit OK. It's going to take it from CSV and put it in a regular table. Now I can remove CSV and I'll open restaurants. Now if I go to fields view, I can add a new field, call the first one X, make it a double, which is a long float, and I'll add field Y and make that one a double, and then save. I think this fields view is one of the handiest things of ArcGIS Pro. You can modify a table, you can reorder your fields, which only does it in memory, it doesn't do it on the actual table. Anyway, fields view is a very handy thing. Now I have the restaurants open and I have my X and Y fields. I right click on X and I'm going to calculate the field. But before I do this, I like to know what the expression is I'm going to put in here. So I actually come to the Python window. I go to Analysis and open the Python window. First thing I do to test things out, and if you get good enough, you don't have to test things out. But you can just, and really it's, it's empty data, so you can just iterate through your screw-ups and get what you need eventually because you're not messing with the original data you're just adding new stuff so you can just recalculate but I like to test things I'm going to copy a sample of what I'm going to calculate from and I'm gonna say my point equals text control V hit enter now I want X to equal I don't know if you guys are into Harry Potter, but Harry Potter knows just a few charms or spells, right? And he uses them to great effect. I only know a few functions or commands in Python, and I use them to great effect. So I'm going to use the split method on a string item. And I'm going to use an open parentheses to split that string. If you don't know what the split method does, I have a video about the split functions. Go to my channel page and search on the Python. I think that it should be obvious which one is, is that function. The split function is going to result in a list with two parts. The first part will be what's left of the open parentheses, and right is going to be what's to the right of it, or the second item. But I only want what is to the right of those, so I'm going to say I want the second item in that list. Because lists are zero indexed, the second item in my list is going to have the index of one. But then I'm going to take that item and split it as well. And I'm going to use the default white space. It's going to split that string based off of the space in between those numbers. So now I want the first item, because that's my x coordinate. That's my longitude. Do you guys have trouble figuring out or remembering what's x and what's y, what's longitude and what's latitude? Let me know what your secret is down in the comments. So that's the first item of my second split function. And for that one, it's good because that's all I need is that number. And then I'm going to print X. So that grabbed that number. So now what I can do is I can just grab, I only want this because I'm going to 
work on something else. So I'm copying that little expression. I'm going, oh, I already have it open over here. So in my expression box, I'm going to take what's in the WKT field, and then I'm going to paste in that expression. Now I hit apply, and I got all my numbers in the X field. Now I have to modify it a little for the Y field, though, because if I just try to use that uh, the second item in this second split, we are also going to get that little parentheses, or that closed parentheses. So I'm going to say y equals my point dot split on the open parentheses and item number two dot split and default of white space. But this time I use string slicing to get what I want. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take item two, but I only want a portion of the item two. So here's where string slicing comes into play. I want everything up unto the last item, that negative one equals the last item in the list, or the last character in that string. So I hit enter, print y. So let's see if that got all the numbers. Does it end with two? Yep. So if I would have changed this to negative two, it wouldn't have got that last digit. So I'm going to copy that and show you what that string slicing is. So if I would have changed this to negative two, now if I print Y, I don't get the last digit. So the way string slicing works, that colon means start at the beginning and go up into whatever the index of that last one is. This, If you put a negative in there, it counts backwards. So that Python video that I talked about, it talks about string slicing too, and it breaks it down and de it describes it better. So that's how I solved it. It took me only like 10 minutes. I guess I want to still do the Y field though for you. So I'm going to do Y. I'm going to copy this. Nope. I'm going to copy this portion, and now I don't have to, I guess I didn't need to copy all that, but, but I did. Hit apply, and now my Y field has the, the coordinates from the WKT field. That's how I solved it. I really like doing this type of thing. I really think it's satisfying to be able to write a little piece of code, especially if it's a one-liner, to get it to do something that you want it to do. It's kind of fun. There, now that that tedious and painstaking description of how I solved the problem is done, we can now map those coordinates. I'm going to close my Python window here and get my map focused. To map these, I'm going to map chat GPTs. I guess we could do both of them. So to do that, we're going to right click on the output CSV and go to create points from table and XY table to point. It has pre-filled in some of these parameters. I'm just going to leave the default XY table to point. X field is X, Y field is Y. If you name your fields like that, it will auto-populate stuff like this. So I'm just going to run it. So there we go. There we have 100 random points that I had, had ChatGPT come up with all over the United States. You can see some snuck outside the border. 
that's because I put in like a, an extent for the coordinates and some are out in the ocean. I kind of liked the restaurant names too, how it came up with those. That was kind of funny. You can do the restaurants the same way. Create it points from X, Y, and OK. So you can see it just put the same points on top of the old points. There you go. That's the solution that I came up with and ChatGPT. I hope you found it challenging, or if you found it easy, good job. If you found it challenging, let me know how and why in the comments, or head on over to that Discord server and post some questions in the... I don't know how Discord works very well. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> so uh, help me learn Discord as well. So head on over there, start some conversations and and uh, meet some new people. And let me know in the comments if you can think of a different way that I could do these videos, make this series better. I'm always looking for feedback. So that's it for now. If you have a challenge that you think would be suited for this type of series, let me know what it is. Either go over to Discord and let me know or uh, drop a comment. Thanks for tuning in. I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, that way you know when these videos drop, and hit that bell so you get notified. Appreciate you sticking around to the end. We'll see you next time.